Neck and shoulders. So for alleviating neck pain, does anybody currently have constant neck pain? It's just something that kind of comes and goes. Constant? Yeah. Okay, good to know. All right, so because there's teachers in the room, one thing to consider is if someone's in like really bad neck pain, you just leave their neck alone like completely, right? So you'd start with their feet or their ankles, which we'll start with. And I know you guys, it's, we can, it's not to the point where you can't move your neck and it's not like a, you know, a chronic, chronic, chronic thing. So we can go deeper than that, but we'll just start there just as an idea. Um, so what I'm thinking is we'll do, um, not legs up the wall, but legs at a 90 degree angle. Um, and actually, let's get two blocks. So we'll have two blocks, a stick, and then feet on the wall, feet on the heart. So just finding a spot where it's easy for you to put your feet on the wall. Okay. 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 Push into the elbows and lengthen the back ribs away from the pelvis. Good. 
And then the second motion is bringing your hip bone to the floor, away from the floor. So think about moving your femurs. Right femur comes down, left femur comes down. Right femur comes down, left femur comes down. Right hip drops, left hip drops. So just moving back and forth. And then trying to control your feet at the same time that you're controlling those femurs. Trying to keep that natural lumbar curve. Shoulders and neck still relaxed. It's a lot of work on those muscles. Okay. Yeah. So it's not just that I'm doing it wrong. No, it's just that how often do you really use your foot muscles? And then the muscles of the lower leg are what support the knees, ankles, and hips a lot of the time, right? And they go, uh, at, you know, our feet start to collapse as we age. It's just making me use the muscles. But if it's too much, you can ditch it, right? <laughs> it just won't stay. <laughs> and then stopping with a nice neutral pelvis, pubic bone, hip bones level. And then looking for the third motion, which is hip bone to armpit, hip bone away from armpit. Hip bone to armpit, hip bone away from armpit. So you sit your right butt into a chair, you sit your left butt into a chair. You think front thigh to back thigh, butt into a chair, and you just go back and forth. And this time we're about trying to avoid the hips going to the floor away from the floor. I'm going to lower it so that the shins are in our knees. You're going to bring your feet down. I'm going to hold the block and bring your feet down. That's your shins are in. <coughs> Is anybody having trouble with that one? Or any of them? Good. Even if you just start by moving the pelvis, that's a great place to start. And then stopping with that nice neutral pelvis, and let's just start to work a little bit with our feet. So we're going to inhale just the toes up, we're going to exhale the toes to the wall. So I'm going to lift these feet up so that the shins are at 90 and the hips just is good. Toes up, toes down, toes up, toes down. Alright, so we want to straighten you out a little bit, so we're going to move the whole torso a little bit to the right. I'll move this with you. Let's lift our head just a little bit. There you go. That's better. And then toes up and keep the toes up. Take your stick into your hand. So we want to straighten you out. So this would be straight. So you need to move your whole torso over. Yeah. And if you can get to a 90 degree angle with the legs, you see how this is a 120. If you could keep neutral pelvis and bring your butt closer, then you would get more out of it. But if that's not possible, then you stay where you are. The closer to the wall? Yeah, so this would be hip. Yeah, closer and closer. If you can, you can keep neutral pelvis. So you're looking for a 90 degree angle to your legs. So you see how this is not straight up and down? Eventually, you want that to be straight up and down. Okay. Yeah, if you can. All right, stick in the palms of the hands. Imagine that your fingers also have imaginary sticks. So we're going nice and wide. Look at your elbows and think about gently pulling those elbows apart so the elbows don't make a bump between the wrist and the armpit. Good. And then start with just some shoulder push-ups here. Keeping the shape of the arm, we just inhale to take the stick to the ceiling. We exhale to take the stick to the floor. So we're moving the humerus bone in and out of the shoulder socket. And then this one, we're going to do the palms. Good. And then visualize you've got sticks under every single one of those finger. And think about squeezing an imaginary stick with the tips of your fingers. Good. And then just observing, if you take the stick as far away from you as you can, it's really hard to shake your head for no. If you pull the stick all the way in, it's really hard to shake your head for no. So you want to find that place where you're taking the stick away from you. There's no valley between your shoulder blades, but it's very easy for you to shake your head for no. And then stop in the center. And then just notice if you're pushing more to one side or the other, and try and have your nose in the center of the stick. And then we're going to exhale to bring the stick towards the thighs. We're going to inhale to take the stick towards the floor. Observing the elbows and not allowing the elbows to bend or to straighten, but keeping them with that nice little 
little mini bend. Toes are still lifted if that's at all possible. Big toes are not higher than the baby toes. So our big toes are usually quite a bit stronger and more flexible. So we've got to make sure that they're not trying to get way higher than the other toes. Really noticing if you start to imprint the low back. So here, Sam, do you feel like the pubic bone is higher? And it's so opposite way. So you see how you're imprinting the back. So I want you to take the pubic. Yeah. There, that's a neutral pelvis. Now notice the difference there without letting the pelvis change. That's better. So then it really accesses your shoulders, right? But no pain at any time you want to rest, rest. So this particular series is for joint stability. Right. And then just take that stick to wherever you can and just hang out. Stick between the palms of the hands. It's easy to shake the head for no smooth, even breaths. Can it be resting on the back? It can, but ideally it's not. Yeah. And then think about palms squeezing the stick, elbows pulling apart. Think about an imaginary stick where your hip flexors are and take that towards your butt. Think about a stick at the backs of the knees and pull that towards your kneecaps. Remember, you can rest anytime you want to rest. And then when those five breaths are complete, drop your toes. Nice inhale to bring the stick back up and over. Just place the stick beside you. If you can continue to keep your toes up, great. If you're not used to that, then give your toes a little bit of a break. You can ditch the block whenever you want to. And then you're going to inhale to bring your heels straight up. Exhale to bring your heels straight down. If you can keep the block, great. If not, just ditch the block. So now we're doing heels up, heels down. Think inner heels dropping the block, outer heels squeezing the block, trying to maintain that nice neutral pelvis. So toe mounds are going to stay at the wall. Yeah. And then you're going to move your heels to and from the wall. Yeah, good. And the next time you lift the heels up, keep the heels up, keep the neutral pelvis. This time let's take the stick into the palm of the hand, outer wrist, outer elbow, outer shoulder in a nice straight line. Palms are facing towards the wall, so hands are shoulders distance apart, thumbs are on the same side of the stick as the index finger. We're going to push very firmly into the base of the thumb and the index. We're just going to go a little more narrow, so that's your outer shoulder. Good. To your other shoulder. Nice. And then from here again, let's do the push ups. Take your fist towards the sky as high as you can, taking the humerus bone out of the shoulder socket. Bring the arm bones back in. Arm bones out of the shoulders, arm bones into the shoulders. Up and down, up and down, learning how to move that humerus bone. And then take those arm bones to 10 out of 10. See if you can shake your head for no. Notice that when you're stretching those arm bones as far as the shoulder sockets as you can, it creates tension in our neck. And then take the arm bones all the way back into the shoulder sockets. Just see what it's like to shake your head there. And then find neutral. So take those arm bones away from you so you find extension. No valley between the shoulder blades, but you can easily shake your head for no. There's still a room there. And then exhale to take the stick towards the thighs. Inhale to take the stick towards the floor without the elbows or the arms changing. Up and down, up and down. Keep zipping your belly, 
keep trying to maintain a nice neutral pelvis. So stand if you can, you lift your chin just a little bit. Nice and there, take your pubic bone towards the wall, the opposite way. Yeah, there you go. Sometimes I think hips stick in the hip flexors, moving that way, and that helps too. Let's do two more, and then we're going to take the arms down towards the floor and just hang out. Pausing there, squeezing the stick with the hands, getting rid of any wrinkles in the backs of the wrists. Great place to notice if you're symmetrical, trying to find that symmetry if you don't have it. Remember, you can always back off. Five more breaths here. Then when those five breaths are complete, exhale to drop your ribs. Nice inhale to bring the stick back up and over. Place the stick beside you. <clears throat> Remove your blocks. Place them beside you. Let the soles of the feet come onto the floor. See if the soles of the feet can clap. And then see if you can take your toes to the wall. So your toes are being folded back to you as much as possible, but you're keeping the toe mounds together. So you're in Baddha Konasana, you bring your feet to the wall, the toes are at the wall so that the toes are being stretched away from one another. You've got a nice neutral pelvis. Push into your elbows and just lengthen the back rib cage away from the pelvis and then gently lift your head and lengthen your head away from the shoulders. Good. Then let's find a nice three part yoga breath. So belly fills, ribs fill, chest fills, chest empties, ribs empty, belly empty. Keeping in mind that at any point it's too much of a hip stretch, you can just use your blocks to wedge your thighs to give yourself a little bit of a less, lesser stretch. All right, so you've got your pelvis, push into your elbows, lengthen your back ribs. Yeah, yeah, and then bring this part down. Yeah, and then bring that part. Yeah. There you go. You feel how these are dropping, eh? Yeah. Yeah, they're really starting to shift. And then from here, you're going to relax your shoulders and then excuse my coffee breath. Mm -hmm. I have a lot of humans to look after this morning. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they don't go, are baby tumblers supposed to be touching? They will one day. Yeah. Not necessarily today. It's like, you know, when you do it at the floor and like my baby toes, you know, it's pretty similar. My baby toes don't touch. Whereas here, there's this little ledge, so my big toes kind of have more room, and I can sometimes get my baby toes. But yeah, you know, as soon as I bring my baby toes together, my ears Yeah. Interesting, hey? Those baby toes. Mm -hmm. So nice big waves of breath up and down the spine, just letting the body relax. Anytime we're relaxing the shoulders, it's always palm spacing up. And you feel the difference as soon as I did that, right? Okay? All of a sudden, the shoulder heads just relax. And sometimes it's nice to think about someone doing handstands on the shoulder heads. Nice. And so, do you feel how you're getting a wrinkle just a little bit? Yeah, bingo. So if you closed your eyes and opened your eyes, you'd be looking straight up at the ceiling. Whereas if the chin's tucked, if you closed your eyes and opened your eyes, you're looking more around the wall. Does that kind of make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then you want to notice that when you're driving, sitting, texting, all of those things, because what you're describing is that tension. Mm -hmm. Just those little tiny habits can really help. All right, let's bring our fingers to our shoulders. We're going to hold on to our shoulders like they were, you know, some type of melon that we were trying to check to see if it was squishy. So you're going to hold on to those shoulders, gently squeezing. If you can't reach, that's fine. And then we're going to start with forward circles. Trying to keep the neutral pelvis 
kind of keep the neutral spine, and we're going to draw circles going forward. If you can get the elbows to touch, great. See how long the elbows can touch for, and really use your peripheral vision to watch those elbows, that they're moving equal speed, equal distance. And then change direction with the circles, big, slow circles. Stopping with the elbow circles, elbows at a shoulder's height, gently squeezing the shoulders, exhale to bring those elbows to touch, inhale to take those elbows apart, exhale elbows touch, inhale elbows part. Again, just very gently squeezing those shoulders. arms come down beside you, palms facing up. Think about melting the shoulder heads to the floor as you move the skin of the armpits up towards the sky. Close your eyes. Big, big breaths right into those shoulders. Heels up, 
toes up and then the heels come up keeping the toes up and then the heels go back to the wall and then the entire sole of the foot lifts <coughs> yeah toes up heels up soles up so you keep going like that toes up heels up soles up so you say this is your hip this is your knee and your foot should be in line with that nope in yeah so Hips distance is your two fists. My fists are bigger than your fists, right? So mine shouldn't fit. It's also hip, center of knee, center of foot. Hip, center of knee, center of foot. Toes up, heels up, soles up. One more time. And then bring your feet to the wall and lift just the toes up. And then noticing if your feet have gone wider. So your feet have gone wider. So hips distance, two fists between your feet, also center of the foot, center of the knee, center of the hip, in alignment. Great. Take the stick into your hands. We're going to lift your feet just a little bit. Oh, you stole my stick. There you go. <laughs> I'm a stick thief. Don't trust me with the sticks. All right, palms are going to face over the crown of your head. Arms are shoulders distance apart, so outer wrist, outer elbow, outer shoulder in a straight line. You're going to bend your elbows to a 90 degree angle. Elbows are right over those shoulders. So, your elbow is a shoulder's distance apart, and your wrist is a shoulder's distance apart. So if I came with my stick, I'd be able to put my stick on your outer elbow, and then I'd bring it forward, and it would be on your outer wrist. So you need to bring your outer wrist to my stick. and then we find a 90 degree angle. Ideally, we want the thumbs on the same side of the stick as the index. If we can, if we can't, we can't. And then we really push into the base of the thumb and the index, and then we look for symmetry. Yeah. So that the wrists are level, elbows are shoulders distance apart, elbows are lifting away from the floor, extension, no tension. There you go. And it's rock solid, so we want it level. Good. And then we'll do a couple shoulder push-ups here. So we've got our 90 degree angle, and then we're just going to move that humerus bone in and out of the shoulder socket. Wrists are as high as elbows. Elbows are as wide as shoulders. Yeah. Wrists are as wide as elbows. So even a little wider, so I touch my stick. Yeah. So that's an alignment. Wrists a little wider. 90 degree angle. Good. Lifting to the sky, away from the sky. So moving that humerus bone up and down. So elbows should be as over the shoulders and as wide as my stick. Good. Wrist should be as wide as my stick. Nice. So that's a shoulder's distance. Yeah. So it's a lot wider than you think. It makes a lot of space for the neck. And then go to extension with tension. Take those forearms as far away from you as you can and notice how that's gross on the neck to move your neck. And then sink the arms all the way to the floor. Notice how that feels. Wire. Yeah, it makes it so much easier and so much more stability for your extends. And then bring them all the way down to the floor. We've done that. Yeah, so then we find that perfect extension, no tension, and we hang out. And then we're going to keep the elbows from moving in and out. So we're going to think about the inner elbows dropping something, outer elbows squeezing something. And then we're going to inhale to slowly straighten without the elbows ideally coming closer to one another. And we're going to exhale to slowly bend without the elbows coming apart. So eventually we're straightening and bending, but our elbows are staying the same. And honestly, sometimes it's good to not straighten and bend as much, but to keep the elbows from moving, because we're looking for stability more so than mobility. So bend. Take your elbows to me. Yeah. So see how they're coming mm -hmm. in? So you, what am I asking them to do? I'm saying don't go to where they come in. Does that mm -hmm. make sense? So what you have to think about, because we really need to stabilize those elbows. Mm -hmm. We need to think about a block here, and we're dropping it. Or you could think about a strap here, and you're pulling at it. Either way. And I can put a strap there, but you've got your imagination, and that works good. And you can see it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good. 
and it might be a smaller movement, but now you're isolating the muscle, right? Mm -hmm. As opposed to just doing what we always do, mm -hmm. same recipe, no different mm -hmm. cookie. Mm -hmm. Makes sense? All right, bend your elbows to a 90 degree angle, hang out, make sure you can shake your head for no. Exhale to bring the elbows to the ribs, inhale to bring the fists to the floor. Exhale to bring the elbows to the ribs, and inhale to take the fists to the floor. So again, like I said, if someone had like extremely bad neck pain or serious injury, then we wouldn't even do the shoulders. We would just do this without the shoulders and we would just work the feet and we'd do some wrist work, which we're gonna do momentarily. Because no one in here is, you know, wearing a neck brace or anything like that, we can go a little bit deeper. But noticing that the whole time the neck is totally supported, so we wanna keep this 90, so you're pushing into me. Push, push into me, push into, yeah. So push, push, push. Push. Now keep all that action so it's not loose and you're going really refined. Can you find a neutral neck for me, Sam? Yeah. Next time the fists come towards the floor, see if you can hang out. Bring the fists as close to the floor as you can, but watch those elbows. So we are not straight on our mat, which tells me we're not straightening our hips first and then straighten your torso from there. So if I've got the stick straight, which was your spine going to move? Yeah, too often. Okay. A lot. No, here's your pubic bone. This is interesting. Yeah, sit yeah. so to the left. Yeah, totally. So what happens is you my hips would be bothered me. So I'm so excited about it. It's just one side's working really harder, so it keeps moving you. Does that make sense? Yeah. And so with headstands, we just want to fix that so yeah. that we're not always working the same thing. So that's that's, that's right. straight. Yeah, you know what's next, okay? And then from here, we're gonna keep the block between our thighs. Our thigh's not gonna move. We're gonna take that right foot just a little bit away from the wall, keeping it flexed and with the toes lifted. So the exact same foot, foot doesn't change. And then you're gonna to exhale to bring the heel as close to the butt as you can. You're gonna to inhale to take the leg up without the thigh moving. So if you're twisting the block, that thigh is moving. So you float the right foot off the wall just a little bit. If you need to come up off that left heel, you can to create the space. And then you drop the heel to the butt, you straighten the leg up without the thigh moving. Noticing that exact point where the thigh moves away from you, don't let it. So we don't want the thigh to move forward or back. Our priority here is that the thigh does not move forward or back. Watch those triple chins. Jane, can you find your ribs here? So pushing the back of the skull. Good. Fine, not moving. Just the shin is moving up and down. If it's too much, you can always bring your elbows back around. Does anybody feel like they're not finding this? You'll just give yourself that space. And this is pretty. Yeah. And now straighten up your neck so it's even between your arms. Yeah. And then straighten that leg to hold it straight as you can without one thigh moving forward or one thigh moving back. If you still have your neutral pelvis, are you still lengthening your back ribs? Do you still have a neutral neck? And then we're going to point and flex that right foot. You need to rest the shoulders at any point. You rest those shoulders. Yeah. I told you I took a picture of your foot and I showed one teacher and she's like, you got to go to New York. She's like, I don't know. <laughs> I'll find it in June. The kinesiologist said that mm -hmm. it's activating the outside of my too much. 
they're just so different. Like one foot always dominates yeah. the other, which makes sense because you're super strong, you know, on that right side in particular. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. I'm just curious as to other things, you know what I mean? Yeah. 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 And they've come so far. Yeah. They really have. It's just that getting out of this angle and the sole of the foot is tricky. Yeah. We'll keep working it too. I've got some tricks up my sleeve. Yeah. And then point the toe and draw big slow circles one way. So again, anyone had anything major going on, we wouldn't start with a block, right? We would just do it without a block and we wouldn't be using a stick. We would just have our arms beside us and it would be enough. Watching with your eyes and not your neck. The neck is neutral the whole time. <coughs> and then point your toe and draw big, slow circles one direction. So, what we're working is the superficial back line, right? And it runs from our toes all the way up the back body, um, across the back of the skull, and injects into the eyes. And so that's one of the main go-tos, especially with postural stuff, if we've got neck pain. Make sure we're going to the pinky toe edge as much as the big toe edge if we can, and we're going to change directions. 
And this whole series is just designed to get it sliding, basically. And so it frees up. Um, we have a strip sort of mid-back, like from just under our armpit to just under our armpit, sort of halfway up the back where almost all of the fascial lines cross. And if those fascial lines aren't sliding, we get a lot of pull in that area. And if things aren't sliding in that area, we get a lot of pull into the neck. Neck and shoulders. And then stopping with the circles, let's flex, let's curl, let's point, and let's flip. So we're going to flex, so the foot is flat, trying to get the toes level with the toe mounds if you can. We're then going to curl the toes around the toe mounds as if those toes were holding onto a pencil. We're going to point the foot like a dancer. We're going to flip just the toes back to us and try and spread them. Flex. Curl, point, and flip. Watch those thighs. I see some of those thighs going to the wall, Lisa. Flex, curl, <laughs> point, and flip. And then flex to hold. Good. Watch that our knees aren't turning out to the side, but both knees are still pointing straight over the crown of the head. Remember, you can rest whenever you need to rest. You can do less anytime you need to do less. So you've got the nice wrist, now just bring them as close to the floor as you can without losing that wrinkle-free wrist. I'm going to put something under your head for this one. And can you bring the elbows to the floor? No, it's okay. I'm going to come over. Let's take a look. Just this guy. And if the shoulders are too much, then you can always do less. Just let me know. Good. Yes. Got it. No, no, it's okay. Um, let me just see. I want baby toe edge straight. Good. And want the knees touching if you can. Um, so here's your hips. We're going to move your whole torso this way. There we go. Perfect. Remember, one wasn't built in a day. <laughs> 
then I'm going to slide this in here. So keep your elbows down. And just root the back of so the arms into that. There you go. Just a little bit of support. Karate chopping out, your inner wrists, wrists are karate chopping in. And then visualize a PVC pipe around your humerus bone, your upper arm bone, so that you can't move your upper arm bone to the floor away from the floor or to the sky away from the sky, so those arm bones aren't moving in any direction, but they're just going to rotate. And you're going to inhale to take your fists as high as your elbows, you're going to exhale to take your fists towards the floor. So just rotating your humerus bone, and then noticing, you had perfect alignment before, if you can keep that 90 degree. So a lot of us, our wrists start to go really wide. So that's your habit. Right, so when I think of you, you gotta find this for pinches. So push in a knee, push in a knee, and then try and keep that, don't let the wrist go in or out. Keeping a neutral pelvis, and your wrists go in, so you want to push out and then bring it down. But keep pushing out. So see how they're coming in? You want to push quite hard to get them there. Yeah. So sometimes it helps to visualize the back elastic bands around those forearms, pulling at those imaginary elastic bands. So a lot of us we let the elbows creep up. You want to keep the elbows as low as the shoulders. So pause. You say your elbows are pushed up. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the PVC pipe and kneeling in here. Now rotate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then to the floor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then bring the fists as close to the floor as we can and just hang out. Try and get the pinky wrist and the thumb wrist equal distance from the floor as we hang out. Just breathe into it. Shoulders, we're going to move this way. 
and then lengthen your spine away from the neutral pelvis, try and get your back ribs closer to the floor. Yeah. There you go. I think these guys have had it in the last one. It's trickier than this one. Good. <clears throat> Press into both feet. Get rid of all the wrinkles in your heels. If this does not feel like enough of a hip stretch for you, then you can lift up that left heel. So you have options. If you know that this is, is easy for you, you want to work a little bit harder, then you could do the pinch arms that we just did with the palms down towards the floor. Or if you wanted to work even harder, you could do palms up towards the sky. If you know that this work is more challenging, then have your arms straight, hands and shoulders distance apart. So arms straight, hands and shoulders distance apart would be more mellow. Pinch arms would be more intense. If pinch arms are hard, palms down. So palms down for you. Yeah, thumbs with the index. Good. And then do a couple shoulder push-ups. So arm options are straight or or palms up. No, pinch on. Pinch on. This way. This. Yeah, perfect. Thumbs on the same side. Hands and shoulders distance. Do a couple shoulder push ups. So bend your elbows if you pinch your arms. Yeah, there you go. And we got to get this foot up a little bit. Yeah, so that shin is straight, much nicer on the knee. <coughs> and you want to really watch that no wrinkles creep in. Good. And then once you find extension, no tension is your stick level. Are your elbows level? Are your shoulders level? Or is it rolling one way or the other? So you see how that's not level? Good. So with you, if it's not level, what you usually have to do is go to 10 out of 10, reach as high as you can. Feel what that feels like. It's going to feel different on one shoulder than the other. And then gently let it sink in just a little bit, but keep the action the same. And let's see if you can do thumbs on the same side because that's where we're seeing a tiny bit of weakness in that. There you go, perfect. And then get rid of your wrinkles on your chin. Good. Exhale to bring your stick or your elbows towards your thighs. Inhale to take the hands towards the floor. Watching those elbows. So not letting those elbows go wide. Really being honest with yourself, keeping the symmetry. No matter what we do, we should always be able to shake our head for no at any point. There should be no tension in our neck. Should there be a curve in the lower spine? Yes, neutral pelvis. Let's see if we can bend these guys. There we go. And 
And then when you're ready, if you lifted your heel, drop your heel, nice inhale to bring the stick back up and over, place the stick beside you. Really mindful of the knee, draw your knee towards your navel to uncross and just open up the back of the knee. And then bend your knee and bring the foot back to the wall. And then just visualize what it was like to have those blocks there. Find your feet. Knees and feet are at hips distance apart. Toes are lifting. Question mark of the foot is rooting. And then see if you can take it into number four pose on this side. So again, remembering the knee is a hinge, making sure you're pivoting at the hip. We want to keep the sacrum down in a neutral pelvis. We may need to move away from the wall. There should be no wrinkles in your right or left ankle. Nice, and if you can, let you see. Can we bring this ankle over here? If you can, nice. And then we want to make sure that stick in a little as level as you can. And it's a lot of information for someone who's new to it. You're doing great. As long as you're sticking to your numbers, not pushing too hard, you're doing really, really well. All right, so then find that same stick, whatever it was, Make sure you're straight, make sure your hips are level, make sure your spine's straight, and then mimicking the arms. Good. Do some push-ups here. Make sure your elbows are as wide as those shoulders. And then once you find your extension, no tension. Then exhale to bring the stick towards, sorry, the floor. Inhale, take the stick towards the floor. Exhale, elbows to ribs. So now here, come back and just hold it. Yeah, it's just learning your just You'll memorize it. You know, the first time you learn environmental science, you know, all that mm -hmm. right? You have to study it. Mm -hmm. The nice thing about yoga is you can feel it. two more and then bring it as close to the floor as is comfortable for you. Remember there's always that option to lift the right heel. If you lifted the left heel you should do the hips the same ideally unless it's way too much. Jean, can you get rid of your wrinkles in your ankle? So push the right foot into the wall, really find it, and then see if you can find just as much energy and action into the left foot. Almost straight, almost. Yeah, so just a little bit. You just, you just go this way. Yeah. When I measure before, I did the other So my guess is this shoulder works harder, which you can see. just to start with just their feet and some wrist work, but not even wrist work up in the air. It would be wrist work with their arms on the floor, either bent or straight. So often when someone comes, they're like, you know, a little bit is obviously okay to work with, but, you know, something serious, you don't want to go poking your finger into it. You want to work with what's, you know, at either end of it. And then when you're ready, we're going to do a nice inhale to bring those arms back up and over. Pausing there in your number four 
four pose. Take your right heel to the wall if you haven't already done so. Left knee comes in towards the belly. You can even hold the outer left knee to keep it a hinge to uncross. Open up the back of that knee. And then bend both knees. Try and keep your knees together, feet together. See if you can interlace your fingers over the shins and just rock from side to side. Relax your shoulders, relax your neck. And then let that turn into circles. And just loosening up the low back. That was a lot of neutral pelvis, especially if you're not used to it. If you're not used to neutral pelvis, a hot Epsom salts bath tonight will be very helpful because those are muscles we don't use often. Swapping so interlacing of your fingers, change direction with your circles. And then again, rocking from side to side. And then stop rocking from side to side and reach around for a wrist or an elbow or a forearm Make sure the shoulders are relaxed. Push through your feet as we come into full wind remover. And let's just do some nice big belly breaths. Inhale, belly rising. Exhale, belly falling. as you are, don't change a thing. And everybody roll off to their right and let's just come check this out. So just stay where you are. Stay where you are. So I want you to come close. So again, these are like super details, but like, you know, for teaching, it's nice to see them. So on these bodies, does anyone see if they're holding tension in any particular place? No. Neck, both of them. Both. Yeah. Not bad, but you can see it. Do you know how I can see it on her? It's right here. Right? And it's not bad. She can go a lot deeper. So if I was Laura, I would just come and I'd inject her arm bones and then lengthen the back of the neck. Yeah. You see that difference in her throat? It's really subtle. But doesn't that feel better? Mm -hmm. And so I'm going to tell her to inject her, her humerus bone, just like we learned to do, like she's doing a shoulder push-up, and I'm going to let her go. And not only has she got a better neck, right? She's got a way better hip stretch, right? Would you say you have a way better hip stretch? Mm -hmm, yeah, things. better. And so then if I really wanted to work more because I can, mm -hmm. I would be like, take your hip flexors towards your butt, take the backs of the knees towards the kneecaps, and then one more time, inject, because the shoulder is it, yeah. And then shake your head for no. And it's just nicer on her neck, right? And she was a chef for a lot of years and she's worked really hard, so it's nice to make sure that's her stuff, especially as she moves into headstands. So then you can take a break. And then here, we see it not only in her throat, but you can also see it a little bit here, right? And then the other thing, what would you notice straight off the bat about her that you'd want to work on right away? Maybe her shoulders. So shoulders we've looked at, but then, um, we usually start with the feet, right? Because it's hard to build a foundation. So if her feet aren't level and her knees aren't level, what do you think is going on with her hips? They're not level, right? So it's like just a telltale. I can see them across the room that your hips aren't level because your knees aren't level or you know, your femur is not level or whatever, right? Which is, you know, you think I'm reading lines, but I'm not. 
So you can see the thighs aren't level. So what I'm going to get her to do is think front thigh, back thigh. Yep, and I want you to inject this femur just a little bit. Nice. So now her feet are level, her knees are level, her hips are level, and she's not avoiding the left hip, which is tight. Correct? You get more of a left hip stretch. So what do you think I should do with her arms? Strap. More space. Strap. We'll try back of the thighs first. So take your hands here. Yeah, and we'll just see if it works. So better already, and big time I'm going to teach her how to inject because she doesn't know how. And I'm not even going to worry about the torso being different lengths because it's too much info, right? But what we don't want is her to go home and feel her neck. So just a tiny little bit of, wow, what a difference, hey? You feel that? And then she can lift her armpit chest, then go back to your legs. Yes, yeah, so you're going to think front thigh to back thigh. You're going to inject this femur. Nice. And so if she was open, which I know she is, like in some classes, you don't want to give someone a strap because they feel like they're not doing it as well, but I know you're open to a strap. So I'll give you a strap, which is even better. And then you can use your arms, but even relax this arm. Mm -hmm. Nice. And then find your feet, find your calves. So you're getting a better stretch and you're not messing with your neck. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And then she would memorize what this neck feels like because she's got really active arms. So she can ride a bike like that, she can drive her car like that, but she wants to have that relaxed neck when she does it. And then just shake your head for no. So that's what I'm looking for. You feel that it's an effortless no? Mm -hmm. So when I say shake your head for no, it should be really light, right? So it's not, like there's a big difference with that than prep. Zero tension, tension, and we're just, we've memorized tension. Tension is what our body knows and holds on to. And it's just so used to it that to go away from that can be tricky. So let's all try that pose again and let's just look for those things, okay? So look for our feet first and then go all the way up from our feet doing our checklist and then see if you can find the most relaxed neck, even if it means using a stick behind your legs or a strap or whatever you need, okay? So we'll just redo that same pose, getting rid of any tension in the neck. Oh, they're just to the left and on the shelf. Yeah. Are we starting over? So no, nope, just go into it. Nope, so just go right into your, where we were. Yeah, just exactly full, full, uh, full expression. Yeah. <coughs> That's nice. I can feel that day. And that will have a huge effect on your wrist and your too, right? Not overworking it all the time. Yeah, we'll look at your hands today, too. And the thing about a yoga class or a yoga workshop is if we just take one little piece of information out of it, and then we spend the next week or two adding that to our regular classes, practice, whatever, the way we walk, the way we drive our car, then we have that piece forever, right? Whereas if we try to learn 600 things, we're not going to learn anything. Just learn one thing at a time. Do you want us to um, not learn this one? Do whatever you do. Whatever you do, and we'll see. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah, the feet are good. Yeah, and the feet are good. And then you could go, if you want to go for it, you can, but just see what it does. I've never sat in a, like, the video So a nice thing to do is you just need to do child pose at the wall. Yeah. yeah. And then with you, because you would put a block here okay. to make sure your butt's even. Because okay. with you, the twist is happening here. Yeah. That's good. Nice. And then inject these on the bones just by the mm -hmm. There, right there, you feel it? Yeah. yeah, totally. And you just learn to move those bones, right? And this is a goodie for you. I'm just going to come in and I'm just going to think about those arm push ups and just say if it's too much, and I'm just going to move just your humerus bone. So you don't even have to do less, it's more of a hip stretch. Do you feel that difference? Now shake your head. Now imagine if you did all your computer work like that. I'm going to let you go, you're going to hold it in. So you're pulling those humerus bones in. change your bind, you just did this. Nice. Just a little bit. 
And I'll even just give you a tiny more. So what I want you to find is this, and then you can find it in Down Dog. You can find it working. Swap your crossing if you haven't done so already. Top positions, so you're going to roll off to your right side, right arm becomes a pillow for your head, left palm comes in front of your chest, nice inhale and arm strength to push yourself up. Alright, so let's talk about that same action here. So um, if, you, if you want to see me come closer, I'm not as good at angelining as you are. I used to be way better at angelining than you are, but will you do it with me so people can really see angeling? Okay. 